In this video, we're going to talk about how to save money, but more importantly, how to make that money grow. Coming right up. Now, this is John Leaf. This is the first time you come across me. My channel is all about personal finance, starting businesses and growing businesses. So if you want to not miss out on other new videos, then click the subscribe button, turn on bell notifications so you don't miss out on all the new videos that I'll be uploading every day. So the first thing I would say to people when it comes to your personal finances and saving money, you got to start putting it to different pots. So let's say, for example, right now you have a pot for spending money. See, a lot of the times, a lot of people's money is in like one place. And so you don't want to just have it in one place. You want to have it in multiple places where it's growing for you. But where do most people put it? They put it in the bank and the bank is not getting you a good interest. So one of the things that I want to focus on is where can we put our money in it for, in for, for it to grow. So one of the best ways is to put it into real estate. So real estate obviously grows and you know over time if you look at the history of property, property has increased in value because there's more you know demand than supply. When we're saving money we want to say okay let's say for example you can save a thousand pound every three months right. So I know a lot of people you know take their money and then they waste their money or let's say for example you're you know you earn say two thousand pounds per month right. If we could just take 500 of that, right, and save that, you know, every month that would be, you know, 500 pounds. So that means over a year you could actually earn six, um, sorry, save 6,000. But the question is, where can we put that money? So number one is real estate. So you might want to save up two or three years for a deposit, and then you, and then so let's say for example you can save up 15,000 so you could buy you know something pretty small obviously it depends where you are in in the um in the country on the world but obviously the salary will be reflected but the whole idea is to make that money sweat for you and you, you, you might be thinking well john like 15 grand that's that's not going to get me a property well guess what you could start thinking out of the box you can maybe do this with you know two or three other people right and let's say for example you did it with um t you know a partner, right? A friend. Now you have 30,000, right? If you do that with two other people, now you have 60,000. So you could actually put your deposits together. You can put that into a property and then that property could then yield you a good ROI. And so the idea is to get onto the property ladder. So let's say, for example, right now you, you, you put 60,000 into a property. So let's say you buy a property for 200,000, you put a 60,000 deposit in. In fact, normally you'd have to just put a 20% deposit. You know, maybe you need just 40 going into that. But let's say you buy that property for 200. But let's say you rent that property out for, you know, let's say 20, 25 years. And let's say you're taking a repayment mortgage. Well, that mortgage will be paid off at the end of the, you know, the, 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 the term. So after 25 years, you know, that, that's going to go down, but the property price is going to go up. So let's say it's worth 200 now. And let's say in 10 years or 20 years, it's worth 400,000, half a million. Well, guess what? You've now got half a million cash sitting in the bank. And well, when I say in the bank, it's, it's in a property, it's in an asset. You want to start thinking about, you know, like where should we put our money? So real estate, you should definitely think about doing that. And there are creative ways of doing that. I highly recommend you buy a book called Property Entrepreneur. It's written by a guy called Vincent Wong. He's one of my mentors when it comes to real estate. And he talks about how to invest in property as an entrepreneur rather than a, a buy to let landlord. All right. So that's that's the first thing. The second thing that we want to do is when it comes to money is, is how do we make the money work in cash flow? Right. So let's say, for example, right now you've got money sitting in the bank. Well, there's things you can put it to get a higher ROI. So, for example, when I first started in real estate, one of the things I had to do is I had to borrow money from people to buy properties. Right. But that didn't matter because I was borrowing money at like 1% a day. So this is what we call a bridging loan. So bridging loans are quite expensive. But if you can be that bridger, then you imagine charging someone, you know, 1% um, you know, for your money. So let's say, for example, you can lend out a hundred grand. Now you're thinking, well, John, I don't have a hundred grand. I get it, right? But it's, it's always about OPM. One thing I learned um, from this book is OPM, right? Other people's money. So one of the things I want to start focusing on is how do we actually use other people's money? So when I first started, that's exactly what I did. I started to, you know, find people who had the money. I would then, uh, so for example, there's one property I bought in a place called Aldershot and it was worth, you know, 185,000. I bought it for 85,000, but that wasn't my money. I had to go to somebody else and I said, look, I want to borrow 85,000 from you. So I was paying 1% a day. Right. So it's 850 pounds per day interest. But it didn't matter because my goal was to buy that property and flip it. In fact, what I did is I bought the property 
and then you can use some you know creative financing to be able to not have to pay that much interest so the goal is to is to get that is to set up the deal in such a way that when you sell that property you're not paying that much interest and then there's enough margin in there for you to be able to you know if anything happens you you, you know you have a cushion so where can you make your money sweat for you how do you make your money work hard for you so that's another thing you can do right you could actually lend out money on on a bridge and may, may, may not be your money but i know a lot of the friends that i know they actually are, are they've got pots of money and they have money um, lent out to other people but what what they're doing is they're charging say two percent but they're paying one percent so they make one percent margin so they're making money from other people's money when you're saving money up that's one thing you could do there's lots of people that want to borrow money but then you could just loan it out so that that's another way you can do it the third thing which i think is really important when it comes to saving money is let's say you're saving money right now like there's two ta- there's two types of people you either a saver or you are a spender so you save money and you invest money. If you are saving money and investing money, but you're spending money, spending money, like you got to look at what's the ROI. So you want to buy things that increase in value, right? So for example, you want to buy stock. You want like, for example, I invest in real estate. I invest in uh, stocks and shares. So stocks and shares are really good because it means that you don't have to physically be a part of that company. A lot of people want to do things, but they want to become what we call an entrepreneur. So an entrepreneur is somebody who, is doing something uh, from themselves and they are a part of somebody else's organization for themselves. So let's say, for example, right now you work for an organization, but you could have shares in that company. Guess what? You could, you can buy into that company through different options. So let's say, for example, the share price is, for example, argument say $1. And you know, that company will give you share options. So you could become an entrepreneur in that company. So stocks and shares work really, really well. So let's say that, let's say you buy a thousand shares at say $1, but let's say, you know, uh, in a year's time, th- th- that those shares go up to two dollars. Well, guess what? Your thousand dollars now worth two thousand. So you want to put it into things that actually um, make make you more money, right? So I'm talking about cash flow here. So cash flow is something where, where we're increasing our um, cash because we work really hard for money. But the goal is to make money work hard for us. So the skill here is to multiply that money. So these are three ways I highly recommend that you do. Like imagine if you'd have bought stock in Apple before it was you know uh, created, you would have made a lot of money, right? Maybe if you'd have bought stock in Tesla, right, or in Microsoft, you know, 10, 20 years ago, like if you'd have put in 50,000, it'd be worth millions now. So this is why you don't just like, for a lot of you like, like nice things, right? You never want to buy it with your earned income. You want to buy it with your like investment income, right? And that's the key. So that's how you grow your money. It's really hard to just keep saving money. You got to do things with it. Otherwise, you know, it always runs out. So um, I hope you found this lesson useful. By the way, if you love this video, do me a favor and give this video a like. And also if you've got any questions as well, what I've talked about, leave a question below and I'll personally come in and answer that. And which one of these three did you enjoy the most? And which one are you going to try? Again, if you first time you come across me and you want to learn more about personal finances, about how, how to get your money to multiply and to invest, then what I'll do is if you just uh, click the subscribe button, turn on bell notifications. And um, also I'll link some videos here and here and I'll put a subscribe button over here. And then I'll see you in the next video. It's John Lee, the author of Business Hack. Bye for now.